Well, hello again. Here's another <laughs> really big question. I suppose in the geopolitical world, it's maybe the biggest. Now the question is, is this, uh, will China rule the world? Ooh. By that, what I really mean is, will it become the world's dominant superpower? Maybe not necessarily the political leader, uh, but uh, the dominant factor. Well, it's enormous by any standard. It's of course the most populous country in the world, population of about a billion and a half. It's the fourth largest after Russia, the US and Canada. And it's, a, it's annual GDP, gross national product, size of its economy is second only to that of the US, having recently overtaken Japan. So, so one could be forgiven for thinking uh, that, uh, whew, Maybe it will continue its rate of growth and beat the USA, <laughs> but will it? Okay, well, the YES group. Let's first take a look at those who cite its uh, accomplishments as a basis for uh, believing it will become the world's number one superpower. Uh, first, its accomplishments in the last few decades have been stunning, just, just amazing. It's built hundreds of cities from scratch. It's moved huge numbers of its population from poverty into at least subsistence living, if, if not middle class. It's created, wor it's created world class uh, industrial technology and the businesses to go with it. It's the largest producer in the world of ships, high speed trains, bridges, highways, machine tools, computers, robots, tunnels. It also produces the most steel in the world, the most cement and the most coal. It is a production behemoth. Its infrastructure accomplishments are mind boggling. It, it's created 40,000 kilometers of high speed rail. We don't have any in America. To be, it, it builds dams, the largest in the world. It built a 57 story skyscraper in 19 days. It demolished and built a bridge in 43 hours. Uh, yeah, it's, you're gonna be impressed by that. The Dan Yang Kushan Grand Bridge is a 169 kilometer long viaduct on the Beijing Shanghai High Speed Railway. It's the world's longest, lo longest bridge. You can trace it in Google Earth, how about that? And when their awful coronavirus hit the city of Wuhan, it managed to build an enormous quarantine center in 10 days. In that respect, it was the envy of the world and, and it managed the virus spread so quickly that it did not even have to use it. So its ambitions are enormous, uh, especially the One Belt, One Road project, which incredibly intends to connect the Atlantic to the Pacific coast and to the Indian Ocean with both rail and road infrastructure. It'll make trade easier, cheaper, and for the largest manufacturing country in the world, well, it'll enhance its access to, to its markets. In short, they seem to know how to do anything and everything well and quickly. How, how can we possibly beat that? And finally, they have an enormously capable and strong leader in Xi Jinping. Well, perhaps not the sort of chap I would want as a friend or next door neighbor, but absolutely the right, right man for their ambitions and aspirations. And I'm afraid that strong authoritarian leadership of his sort, if not utterly misguided as it is in North Korea, is often superior to the democratic uh, processes we so revere. Uh, can you imagine Xi Jinping dragging his feet about shutting the borders to India and allowing passengers to stream in with coronavirus? No, this is the biggest reason they'll rule the world. Well, there are those who are skeptical. The view of the pessimists is that despite their extremely impressive uh, recent accomplishments, they have formidable, perhaps even insoluble problems which must be faced in the very near future. Well, first of all, there's the prospect of war. If, if a fight breaks out in the South China Sea, uh, China could be in serious difficulty. Uh, not only is there the ever-present American Seventh Fleet, which, to be honest, has vastly superior weapons, 
But China doesn't seem to have any regional friends to support it. Its, its relationship is obviously awful with Taiwan, the rogue regime in North Korea, constantly defies Beijing. It has sour relationships with Seoul, Tokyo, Delhi. The Philippines has recently made bellicose comments about China's expansion intentions. So its ability to prevail militarily must be questionable. Everybody else would gang up on them. Next, corruption is just overwhelming. It's always been that way, but it drains the economy. It commands draconian measures on the part of the central government from time to time. And some of that does not go down well uh, when uh, they have to suppress it. That can fan unrest. Uh, unrest, ooh. Unrest, uh, according to Neil Ferguson, in a wonderful book about China, he says that unrest is seen by the central government as perhaps its biggest problem. They, they have riots all the time everywhere in China, and it's renegade provinces in places like uh, Tibet and with the Uyghurs are examples of that. And of course, the, its problems in Hong Kong are, are an open sore, and they look like they'll continue indefinitely. Uh, the business of building these tall skyscrapers quickly has some underlying problems with it. First, first, the time involved is exaggerated since much of the work is done on a prefabricated basis out of sight and not counted in those fantastic figures they, they seem to quote. Uh, second, uh, workers are poorly paid. They're not unionized. They, they might get a little bit, you know, obstreperous. They live in awful conditions on site when working in conditions just not possible in, in the Western world, uh, and presumably not indefinitely feasible even in China. And, and there's even some question about whether they are being built right. A uh, big building started to wobble this week, so you know, let's not get carried away with their uh, <laughs> uh, perfect skills in building big buildings. Then there's the question of air pollution. Now, we've been in both Beijing and Shanghai in recent years, and the air is really awful. I, I don't have to be a medical professional to tell you that that engenders respiratory disease. And that exists at very high levels in all Chinese cities. That's fueled principally by the use of coal-fired manufacturing facilities. Uh, you know, China's urban population won't put up with that indefinitely. Uh, that's a big problem. It's, it's an awful situation. They don't seem to have come to grips with it. Then there's the question of demography. Now, this, this goes back to the famous one-child policy, where people were kept from having more than one child. You probably remember that. And as a consequence, its fertility rate fell precipitously from 6.3, that's children per woman, in 1970 to just 1.6 today. That's lower than any European country. And the problem is that more and more people rely on social security and pensions to live in. There will be fewer and fewer people working to support them. This is a problem that exists everywhere in the West, but far worse in China. A big, big problem for them. Don't know how they're going to deal with that one. Okay, well, what's my take on all of this? I've mentioned a number of problems, and, and I, I see them all as, as formidable. Well, to begin with, the demographic problem means that old people will become ever more demanding, and young people are going to become ever more resentful. Uh, that, that's a problem. Uh, I don't see how they get around that one, because it's inevitable. In turn, that one is going to lead to the second very serious problem that they have, which is domestic unrest. That's what the central government fears the most, as I said before, and it's the hazard of an authoritarian repressive regime. It's built into their politics. Next, there's always the potential problem of war. Uh, China's a assertive, bellicose member of the Asian community of nations. It appears to have no friends and an unhappy prospect at the best of times. And then finally, and not even mentioned in the arguments above, are the country's debt problems, which are compared to any other major nation, absolutely enormous, both sovereign debt and personal debt and corporate debt, all of them. And the resolution of their levels of debt is subject to, I guess, the arcane principles of 
on economics, international finance and investment, uh, which I, I don't pretend to understand. Not many people do, to be honest. But at the very best, and at the very least, it's a very big worry. So, in sum, in China we have a very powerful and capable country, but one likely to be severely hobbled by one or more of these problems. Winning the world seems, although possible, unlikely. Well, there it is. Uh, that's what I think. I uh, hope you liked it. If so, the usual stuff. Uh, please uh, uh, give it a like, uh, subscribe, uh, notify, comment, and so forth. And I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.